Welcome to Managing Hodgkin Lymphoma. I am Stephen Ansel at, from Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. I'm frequently asked, what are our treatment options today in the post-autologous stem cell transplant setting in patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma? And do I see these options changing in the future? This is actually a really good question because there are two facets to this question. The first question is in patients who have had an autologous transplant but are high risk and the concern is that they are at significant risk for relapsing and progressing. In patients such as that, we typically consider treatment with brentuximab vidotin as a consolidation post-transplant, and in particularly patients who didn't have a good response to initial therapy, patients who relapsed very quickly after therapy before going to transplant, or patients that had disease outside of the lymph nodes, using brentuximab vidotin as a maintenance therapy and a consolidation after transplant prolongs the progression-free survival. So in our practice, that tends to be an important part of what is considered. The second part of the question is, well, what about patients who have disease progression? In those patients, it's particularly important to be aware of new therapies that are making a significant difference to treating patients with classical Hodgkin lymphoma post-transplant. These are treatments that target PD-1. PD-1 is a protein on T cells, particularly activated T cells, and blocking the interaction between PD-L1 and PD-1 allows these T cells to remain active and to target the malignant cell. And these therapies, including uh, antibodies such as nivolumab or pembrolizumab, have proven to be very successful in patients with Hodgkin lymphoma after they have failed an autologous stem cell transplant. Initial studies showed a very high uh, response rate to treatment and subsequent uh, phase two trials which have looked at confirming those results have shown that both pembrolizumab and nivolumab have response rates of approximately 65% to 70% of patients and these responses are very durable. So the landscape has really changed in patients with Hodgkin lymphoma multiple new options, particularly the, the two PD-1 blocking antibodies, but many more coming. Now there are antibodies blocking PD-L1, which is on the other side of the PD-L1, PD-1 axis, and other immune checkpoint therapies. Recent trials have looked at utilizing CTLA-4 blockade with an agent such as ipilimumab in combination with PD-1 blockade, and those results in classical Hodgkin lymphoma after transplant have been very promising. So all told, this is an exciting space and multiple new agents are available, particularly PD-1 blocking antibodies, which have shown very high response rates in patients post-transplant. Thank you for viewing this activity.